Uh, good day, it's Mr. Bill here with another tutorial. Uh, this tutorial is sort of a reply a video response to a guy called Interstate JT on YouTube. Uh, essentially, he has a tutorial it's creating a vinyl effect, and the way he goes about doing that is um, he'll take the sample and put it on repitch, and then go to the master and change the tempo like so. Oops. I'll just change these two sections here on your master song tempo automation is the amount of tempo that you want to automate uh, through so if I go down to 20 on here that means the lowest point will be 20 whereas before as 60 the lowest point will be 60 so if I turn it on to 20 that means I can automate down to 20 BPM and if I turn this one up to 999 that means I can automate all the way from 20 BPM to 999 BPM but I don't really want to do that I just want to go from 120 BPM to 20 BPM so I'll just take this tempo here and I'll automate it all the way down like that. I'll just highlight a section, grab the red line, and that'll create four little points for me. And then I'll just get rid of this point, and there's my automation. So if we listen to that. You can hear it slows down kind of like a vinyl. And then what he's done is he's created another audio track, and he's just taken the input here. Over here is your input and output section. So this top one here is where you're taking your input from. And this bottom one here is where you're sending your input to, or your output to, sorry. So with the input, he'll grab that and he'll record audio from one and then unwarp that sample and there you have it. But I think I've actually got an easier and quicker way of doing this and I think it actually sounds better and you have a little bit more control as well. I'll just get rid of these returns because we don't need them. So what I'll do is I'll create a MIDI track. Uh, by the way, this is a tune that I wrote with a guy called Black Samurai. He's a mastering engineer from Melbourne. And um, yeah, it's just a bit of a kind of weird dubstepy progressive tune. <laughs> So anyway, what I'll do is I'll cut between bar 17 and wherever it drops, I think it's bar 25, bar 26. So I'll cut between bar 17 and bar 26, I'll just press Command E or Control E on Windows to just slice that region out as I've highlighted it, and then I'll go to the MIDI track, and I'll just grab this region, I'll just drag it down into, oh, actually if I do that it'll chuck it in a simpler and we don't have a pitch bend range there, so... What I'll do is I'll go to instruments, I'll get a sampler, I'll put that down in the MIDI track and then I'll drop this sample into that sampler. Then what I'll do is I'll highlight between the same amount of bars, press Command Shift M, I'll open that MIDI clip by double clicking on it and then I'll just make a big C3 note. So now what I want to do is I want to go to my sampler and I want to go to this pane here on the sampler called MIDI. I want to change this pitch bend range to whatever I want, I can go to 12 or 13 or 24, I can pitch bend it fairly far. So now if we listen to this sampler, it's just going to play normally until we start pitch bending it. You might notice it's quieter as well. If you want to change that, go to this filter global pane here and change volume to 0 dB. Just press 0 and then enter. So now if we want to create that same sort of vinyl effect, we just go into the MIDI clip. We click this little E down here, which is like the envelopes for the MIDI clip. So I'll click on that and then I'll click on this pitch bend here. You can go into here and you can go to the MIDI control and go through a bunch of different stuff. So um, you've got volume, pan and pitch bend pretty close because they're kind of the ones that you use the most, I guess. And then um, <clears throat> we'll just have a listen and see where we want to pitch bend it. Okay, so I want to pitch bend it between 1.4 and 2, so just the end of bar 1 pretty much. So again, I'll highlight that section there. I'll grab this red line and I'll just drag it to the bottom and then I'll get rid of this point. So you can hear it's sort of the same effect, it's just like you're slowing a vinyl down. And I actually think it sounds a little bit smoother as well, so you can do a lot of cool stuff with this. Do something like that. So I'll just start drawing random stuff in everywhere and we'll see how that goes, it'll probably sound a bit crazy. And I'll just give it some smooth bends. I just press Command B there to go between my draw tool and my cursor. So I might bend it here as well. Oops. 
I'll just give it sort of more of a smooth edged bend, see how that sounds. So yeah, that's pretty cool. While I'm here, I might just show you a couple of more things about the sampler. Uh, you've got these zones where you can chuck a bunch of different samples in. I won't go right into them at the moment. Uh, in this sample section, you've got a reverse function which just plays the sample in reverse, basically. So instead of playing the sample from here to here, it'll actually play it from this end here backwards. That's pretty cool. So we'll just turn that off. With the sustain mode, basically once your sample's played through, if you've got this one selected, It'll play it through and then it'll loop back and it'll play it again, whereas with this one it'll just play through once and that's it. Uh, with this sustain mode you see it's got a forward arrow and a backward arrow, when it gets to the end of the sample it'll start playing it backwards again, so I'll just show you that one. You see how it's played it forward and then as soon as it's hit this edge here it's started playing it backwards. And actually I'll show you this one as well. See, it's just looped and uh, it's just looped that selection there by selecting that. So we'll move on now to uh, the pitch oscillator section. Uh, with this section, you can kind of mash the sample with an oscillator. If you click on oscillator here, and you choose the oscillator and you turn your volume up, it's basically just meshed it in with a square wave, and then you've got some cool options with the frequency that it meshes it with. Uh, stuff can get a little bit hectic when you do that and then you've got a pitch envelope and basically that tells it where the pitch starts and drops on the oscillator and you have an amount that it does it by <laughs> so you can get some cool weird stuff happening like that as well then on your filter global section you've got a really cool filter you've basically just got a this is called a morphing filter and you, essentially you've, you've got the the regular parameters that you have on a normal filter like you have resonance and you have frequency but then you've got this cool morph function and this turns it at the moment it's a, a low pass filter and then as you turn the morph function see it slowly turns into a band pass filter and then a high pass filter and then it slowly turns into a notch filter which is really cool and then you've got a wave shaper just under it you can feed the wave shaper into the filter or you can click this arrow to feed the filter into the wave shaper then you've got a, a couple of different parameters for that and the amount that you're feeding it by. Um, I'm just going to go through all this stuff real quickly. I'll, I might do a further tutorial on it later if people are into this kind of stuff. And then in modulation, you basically just have an auxiliary where you send uh, parameters from wherever on the sampler to another place and then a bunch of LFOs to control that. And then on your MIDI, here's all your routings. So say you want the velocity in uh, this section here. So you want uh, click on this little arrow here to show your velocities. Uh, there they go. So say you want these velocities to actually work, at the moment they won't do anything if I turn it down. So it's done absolutely nothing until I go into this routing section and I tell velocity to affect volume. So I click on volume and I turn that amount up and then it'll, it'll actually do stuff now. So if I turn that down, you can see it's actually quieter. And if I turn it up it's louder. So that's kind of cool. If you want to do some quick sort of volume automations you can get a really small MIDI note, just duplicate the hell out of it and then highlight all of them and then you see it's highlighted all these velocities down here as well. Hold your command key or your uh, control key if you're on Windows and then just draw a line over them and you see it'll follow that line and then you can get cool stuff happening like this and stuff like that. It's kind of cool. Anyway, thanks for listening. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Go check out MrBillsTunes.com. Cheers. Take care.